I want to do a quick video on Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 to 31. Many people uh, believe that, um, uh, that that is talking about the rapture. So let's go take a look at it. So let's read the verse real quick and kind of get a feel for, for what it says here. Uh, all right. So at that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. So a lot of Christians who say post-trib, believe that this answers that question but absolutely not it does not that's not what it means because where there's only two places that talks about this instant all right so let's go to the first one which is the book of revelation of course and just to let you know in the book of revelation there is no such thing as rapture because it already happened when you go to the end when jesus is coming with the saints that, that already happened so it cannot be referring to the rapture so we see here let me see um Let me see. Okay, so here, verse 14. So this is Revelation 19, right? So Revelation 19, verse 14. And it says, The armies of heaven dressed in fine linen, white and pure, follow him on white horses, and from his mouth proceeds, uh, proceeds a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. And the nation there is referring to the Antichrist, the false prophet in his armies. And he will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. And he has uh, a name written on his robe and on his thigh, King of kings and Lord of lords. So here Jesus is coming with the saints already. And then we see here, so we go down to 20, verse 4. And it says here, And I saw the thrones, and those seated under them had been given authority to judge. And I saw... Uh, the souls of those who have been beheaded. Now those who have been beheaded went through the tribulation for their testimony of Jesus and for the word of God. And those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or hands. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now, mind you, um, in Revelation 13, there's two types of believers or two destiny for the believers that... Um, are going to go through tribulation and the great tribulation. You know, like what's going to happen to them? There's two types. Not all of them will die. And I want to show you this here. So this is Revelation 13, and this is a beast from the sea. So this is referring to the Antichrist when he starts to rule. So it says here, He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone, anyone, there's a reference to believers. If anyone is destined for captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to die by the sword... By the sword he must be killed. Here is a call for the perseverance, perseverance and faith of the saints. So here it shows you not every not every believer is going to die. So some believers will go to captivity or prison, and some will die by the sword. And here sword is a reference to getting the heads cut off. We just read that in verse 20, and I will show you in Revelation 6. In Revelation 6, um, let me see. It is okay right here. Verse nine. And when the lamb opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony they had upheld. And they cried out in a loud, loud voice, how long, O Lord, and holy and true, until you avenge our blood and judge those who dwell on the earth. Then each of them was given a white robe and told to rest a little while longer until the full number of their fellow servants, believers, their brothers were killed just as they had been. So see, some are destined to get the heads cut off and some are destined to, to go in prison. So then in Matthew 24, it says that he sends his angels to gather the, the elect, but there's some already dead. So that's not the ones he's gathering. And I'm going to show you in Daniel, who is that referring to? So in Daniel, let me get there. So Daniel 7, 
Let's see, Daniel 7, and it is, okay, okay, here it is, so let's start, we'll start in 24, so this is Daniel 7, 24, and it says, and the ten horns are ten kings who will rise from this kingdom, after them another king, different from the earlier ones. will rise and subdue three kings. He will speak out against the Most High and oppress the saints. Okay, now this is during the Great Tribulation of the Most High, intending to change the appointed times and laws. And the saints will be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. So a time is one year. Times refers to two years and half a time refers to half. So we got here three and a half years. All right, so that's this is referring to, remember what I just read in, in Revelation 6. Some, so they'll be given into the Antichrist's hand. Some will go to captivity, and some he will kill with the sword, meaning he will cut off their heads. So, verse 26 But the court will convene, and his dominion will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. That's when we read when Jesus comes in the white horse and opens up his mouth, and a sword comes out and kills his army, and then he throws the Antichrist and the false prophet into the lake of fire. So, that's what it's referring to. Verse 27. Then the sovereignty, dominion, and greatness of the kingdoms under all of heaven will be given to the people. What people? The saints of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and his and all rulers will serve and obey him. So then when Jesus, so then, okay, we see here that the Antichrist gets defeated. Jesus comes, and then what does he do with the saints? So whose saints are these? Which, which saints are these? These saints is this one right here. These saints are, verse 31, and he will send out his, his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect. Those are the saints we just read in Daniel 7, from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. So this is not a rapture. These are the saints who were in captivity, not the ones who died, because the ones who died come back to life. They resurrect with Christ. So these are the saints, according to Daniel 7, that Jesus grabs to bring to him because Jesus will give them a kingdom to rule alongside Jesus. All the saints, those who come with Jesus and those who are still alive, Jesus will bring and they will reign with Christ. And uh, just to let you know really quickly, just to show you that Jesus, when he comes, he kills the Antichrist. Uh, well, not only kill him, but he destroys his army. But then he gets the Antichrist alive and the false prophets and throws them into the, into the lake of fire. So let's take a quick look. And here it is. So here, at verse 15, it says, And from his mouth, okay, now this is referring to Jesus, proceeds a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with an iron scepter. So he's a, a, the sword comes out of his mouth, and he destroys them. And uh, let's see. Okay, here. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth with their armies assembled to, to wage war against the one seated on the horse. Okay, that's referring to Jesus and against his army. But the beast was captured along with the false prophet who on its behalf had performed signs, deceiving those who had the mark of the beast and worshipped this image. Both the beast and the false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, and the rest were killed with the sword that proceeded from the mouth of the one seated on, on the horse. So you see here, so then Jesus comes, he he kills the army of the Antichrist, then he gets the Antichrist, throws him into the lake of fire, then he gets the elect, and he gives him a kingdom. So really quickly, really quickly, uh, man, I should have, hold on, okay. So really quickly, we see right here. So then the sovereignty, dominion, and great and greatness of the kingdoms under all of heaven will be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will serve and obey him. So that's Matthew 24. So that's what's happening in Matthew 24. So Matthew 24 is not the rapture. Verse 31, and he will send out his 
angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. So these are the saints that when he gathered the elect, those are the saints in Daniel 7. So he gathers them, and then he gives them um, a kingdom and dominion so that they could serve along Christ. And then those who got beheaded, remember, there's two types of Christians in the Great Tribulation. Those who get beheaded and those who stay alive. So when Jesus comes, he comes back with the rest of the Christians that um, were raptured up. And just for a quick note here, that they will be raptured so that they will not go um, through the Great Tribulation. And just to, you know, so you guys can see it. Hold on one second. Here. So this is First Thessalonians 1, verse 10. And it says, And to wait, and to wait his son, and to await his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, our deliverer, from the coming wrath. Are you see that? So, again, and to await his son from heaven, whom he... Raised from the dead, referring to Jesus' resurrection, Jesus, our deliverer from the coming wrath. So, as you guys could see, the Matthew 24, 31 does not refer to the rapture. It refers to the gathering of the elects to give them their dominion and their thrones to rule along with Jesus. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. All right, thank you.